Hi everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland and welcome to what is going to be the shortest reading wrap up of all time for September. September was an absolutely mental month for me. I did insane amounts of overtime at work and I read a total of three books. I did start about I don't know how many other books um, but I just didn't get to them any t free time I had I was too tired to read. It's hard to say what I did really. Uh, I did watch a little bit of Netflix but not even a huge amount of that. I watched some of the first series of Ghosts and I really really enjoyed that. The UK one it was brilliant. Um, so I must get back to that but I probably, you know, knowing me I probably won't watch any telly now again for the next few months. That's the way it works. Hopefully uh, when this point in October is over I will be a little bit more sane. Not a lot more because I have to do exams for work in November so I'll still be very busy and will be reading less exciting things than uh, than books unfortunately. Hopefully nowhere near as bad as September because honestly that's not what life should be like for anyone and I definitely would not advocate that kind of uh, work-life balance so yeah I have made a change which I'm hoping will improve things but it hasn't kicked in yet so yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed. <laughs> But yes, um, I read three books in uh, I read three books in September. I started many more books. Um, there was one book that I read half of and DNF'd. Um, it's quite rare for me that I'd get that far into a book and not finish it. But I'll talk about it briefly here, just because I have few, so few other books to talk about. But that book was A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. Um, I don't often reach for romance. It appeared recommended to me in my Kindle and I felt like that I really could do with something light and easy to read. And um, yes, I'm very disappointed actually I didn't finish this. I think it would rank as excellent in conception but not in execution so it's actually a trans romance and to my shame I've never actually read a book um, featuring a trans character like an explicitly trans character so it features a character called Violet who um, was assigned male at birth and she went to fight at Waterloo um, with uh, her friend Justin and was severely wounded and assumed dead and they meet again after a few years um, and they both are suffering from a bit of PTSD and obviously um, Justin doesn't know that Violet is alive um, so yeah you can see why I was attracted to the story but yeah it was a few things and I did look up other reviews to see if it was just me because like I said I don't read a lot of romance and funnily enough when the romance I have re read it's mostly contemporary I wouldn't say I read a huge amount of historical romance in particular um, but yeah number one it was a bit too sugary sweet for me um, but number two the main thing was like a lot of people talked about suspension of disbelief and things and like I could get on board with that more or less um, even though you know it was quite hard to believe that Justin wouldn't have recognised Violet at all um, but the main thing was I just found it was really badly written I don't know it was just so it seemed so long that's why I got about halfway through in it and you thought you'd gone through a lot but it like there was still half the book left and I just couldn't make myself drag myself through another however many pages but yeah I just felt like the tension maybe weirdly to say it was like resolved a bit early and yeah I don't know I just I just wasn't a fan of it unfortunately um I know that other people I know that Alexis Hall's other books like boyfriend material are really well reviewed so um I would consider maybe trying them in the future but uh yeah just not a fan of this one unfortunately. So in terms of the books that I did finish, uh, so the books I carried over from August was this one, <laughs> very different, uh, The Heart of the Antarctic by Sir Ernest Shackleton. This is the story of his discovery expedition uh, which is his, his attempted at reaching of the South Pole. Um, I read this because uh, Galway was having kind of a little bit of an Antarctic moment at the start of September and I was completely there for it. Sir Ernest Shackleton was actually from Kildare in Ireland and um, he classified himself as an Irishman and the County Kildare Orchestra came to Galway playing their absolutely wonderful concert and it was not so much um, based on this but based on the Endurance Expedition with some beautiful music, really really good. Um, and then like the week after, the absolutely brilliant one-man play about Tom Crean the next week and oh, I cannot describe how excellent it was. He's actually just starting, I'll put the poster for it here because I can't think of his name, Aidan something. He's actually on a UK tour 
in October and November so um, if there's any dates near you I'd really really highly check it out like it's such a wonderful story but he's just he has such charisma on stage I was never at any theatre performance that was so unanimously well received by the crowd and um, everybody was just blown away he's just so He's, he just held the crowd in the palm of his hand. But anyways, back to Ernest Shackleton. So this is an expedition from 1907 to 1909 um, when he attempted to reach the South Pole, like I said, um, but ended up actually falling short. Um, this is the book he actually wrote, like so it's his own account of the expedition. And yes, it's as you'd expect. There are a large amount of passages of this that like admittedly are quite dry. Um, I really liked the story of him getting ready for the expedition. Um, but then there's a whole bits on like the equipment they had and how many barrels of everything that they had that is a bit dry to read and what kind of like charting and stuff they're doing so like not so relevant to us as modern readers but the highlight was as expected was Shackleton's attempt on the South Pole and he says in here that the extracts are from his diary unedited um like I'm sure he did edit them a little bit whatever he says um as anybody would with their own diaries but um yeah it was just really really thrilling stuff he didn't actually manage to reach the South Pole and had to turn back because they were so short on food and you can see the entries kind of getting shorter and kind of more desperate and um just his character really came across so that was an absolutely thrilling section of the book um what was really interesting this as well is like you I suppose you'd heard other people's opinions on Shackleton and especially I suppose his attitudes around money or about borrowing money so it's funny to read it in his own words here when I've read other perspectives on him from different books but I think it's fairly clear that he was uh, very admired by his crew and things so yeah I'm really glad to have read this it's always very useful to have a for a first-hand perspective and but yeah hopefully I will someday get around to reading uh, his other one about the endurance expedition which obviously is the more famous one with the trip to Elephant Island and all that so yeah very worthwhile read. So the second book I finished then was um The Red Queen by Philippa Gregory. This is my first Philippa Gregory and uh, everything is in halves in this video apparently but I really really loved the first I bet half of this book. It follows Margaret Beaufort of the House of Lancaster, the mother of Henry VII and she actually had him when she was about 13 or something um, and yes she basically devotes quite a large period of her life. She's a very religious woman um, and really wants Henry to become king. Um, she's married several times for several different reasons. None of the men were of her own choosing. And uh, yeah, she doubtless had a very, very difficult life. Um, so although I enjoyed this book as like a vehicle for learning more about the Wars of the Roses because I like it's it I just it will never stick in my head. I had the exact same issue with this book as I did when I attempted to read um the Six Tudor Queens book by Alison Weir of Catherine of Aragon, and I think it's just like reading a fictionalized account of one person's life isn't for me. Like I think you need to be very interested in that person because like. <laughs> I, I don't know I've never read any Philip Gregory's other books but it's when you're trying to cover that time span of time you are just kind of recounting events rather than making them really interesting or like really developing other characters in the plot like it's too focused on just Margaret for me so I think I will be wary of reading books like this in the future so yeah I'm not sure if I'll be that quick to pick up another Philip Gregory unless it's focused more on the time period and not just one particular character so um yeah at least I I, I didn't really realize maybe that that's what I didn't like about the Car Catherine of Aragon book but um yeah now I'm maybe starting to learn and hopefully I can uh pick my books more wisely in the future but glad to have finally read a Phil Philip Gregory obviously such a huge figure in the historical fiction world and definitely a gap when I hadn't read any of her before. And the final book I finished then, it's actually kind of hilarious because I made a review of this book, a full book review, because I said I wouldn't have time to talk about it in my full monthly reading wrap up, which I obviously would have had, but I'm not going to go into it here because I did make that full video on it and I'd encourage you to check it out. It is spoiler free, um, but that's In Memoriam by Alice Wynne. I absolutely love this book. One of my favourites of the year. 
It's about this book about these two boys, Gaunt and Elwood, who are at a boarding school in England at the break out of the First World War. And for various reasons, they end up going off to fight in the same company, in the same regiment. And um, yeah, I suppose the major plot of it is that they're both attracted to each other, but um, have never acted on it. And I suppose feelings come out at some stage. Um, it's also very much a kind of about their friend group and um oh, there's like just so much I loved about it and like the, the way they interacted with different people and the different relationships they had with different people I just thought it was such an absolutely amazing book and um the war scenes as well the boarding school bit kind of kept it coming into it but through this um paper called the pre shooting um which had um you know lists of the like, the role of honor um at certain stages um with lists of all the boys from that school that had died and yeah i just absolutely love this book and i'm really glad i picked it up so yeah go and check out my video if you want to find out more i feel like it wouldn't be right to finish my september wrap-up without mentioning shake timber which i did participate in i read most of richard the third apart from the last act which is so stupid um i just haven't got around to finishing it yet <laughs> and it's on my phone and it's always just so unattractive to read things on your phone um, but although I didn't finish reading the play yet, I did buy the box set, um, The Hollow Crown, and I did watch the Richard the Third play, see, because I couldn't find myself time to finish it. I will. It'll be my October reading wrap up. Um, I finished it uh, through watching this and uh, yeah, it was just such a brilliant adaptation. I just thought it was absolutely fabulous. I was, I did buy this box set with the intent of Re watching it while I was reading but it's not like a direct line by line adaptation um it's like it still follows the storyline but scenes are in different order and it's obviously a lot shorter so you'd have to go out and buy um and actually add it an actual more faithful adaptation of the play I think if you wanted to do that and it, I absolutely loved it not only the, the hollow crown but the actual play itself I think like I've never really meshed with William Shakespeare um, so maybe the historical plays are just more for me because they already lend themselves to my interests, I suppose. Um, I not only watched Richard III from this, but I actually went back to the start then and I watched uh, Richard II um, over multiple sittings. I kept falling asleep. That's just the kind of month it was. No offence to the play, even though it was nowhere near as good as Richard III. Um, but yes encouraged me to find out more about Richard III and um, did listen to some podcasts in the middle of the madness. I That was probably a factor in me not reading as much either because rather than listening to audiobooks I listened to some podcasts. I found some really good history ones and uh, yeah like a podcast probably will feature more for me um, as well because I forgot how much I enjoyed them but um, yeah hopefully we'll get more back to more of a normal balance in October or at least for the second half of October. I'm finally going to mention that Roll of Shame seeing as it's coming up to the end of the year. Um, the books that I have started but not finished I'm in the middle I'm near the end I'm not really counting the books that I have just started and not really brought any further um yeah just just to I don't know get it out in the open because it's kind of my dirty little secret at the moment I'm going to start with the ones that I started in September um and I haven't DNF these which is why they're in a different category than a Duchess for the Duke I don't think I've said that right, but um, you get the idea. The first one is this one, uh, The Winding Stair by Jane Aiken Hodge. I'm not going to go too much into the details of them because I hope that these will be in a wrap up at some time in the future, but um, I'm, about, I'm about four fifths of the way done, through done with this. Um, uh, it's not fabulous, but it uh, certainly is an interesting little book set during the Napoleonic Wars in Spain, which is a nice change. Um, Oh, like I had such a big Victorian literature reading um project this year and I'm I'm I, 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 I I'm completely failing at it. It fell off the rails a little bit in July, August and it's just degraded ever since. But I, I was a good bit through and um, the Small House Allington by by Anthony Trollope and really enjoying it. And then I didn't read it at all in September, the month I was having. I just didn't want to touch classics, the ten foot pole. Um so yeah, I but I am hoping that I will finish this in October. The two long term shames of mine which were uh project which were gold of mine to finish this year were um, Ulysses by James Joyce. I'm about, I don't know, 50 pages into that. A versus Don Quixote, which I've been reading since last year and I'm halfway through and I still haven't finished. 
that's way worse like i definitely definitely won't get the two of them finished this year but maybe 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 don quixote but i have to admit it's not a priority for me at the moment the book i have hanging around still since the world cup readathon um which is monkeys are made of chocolate something like that which is a book from costa rica again was really enjoying it but because i have to read it on my ipad it's just never attractive for me to pick up but i will want to finish that so i am also about a third of the way through 11 22 i hope i said that right um by stephen king uh which i've had in my shelves for absolutely ages um i'm reading on audiobook eventually because it's a nice long one to get my teeth into and um yeah i'm enjoying it um, Stephen King is very long winded and it's about um, a guy that's found a way to travel back to the time of the JFK assassination um, so brilliant concept and I am enjoying it to just yeah it's just so meandering but uh, that's Stephen King I suppose I've only ever read The Shining before so um, yeah this is new territory for me uh, but I will finish that as well and finally I'm in the middle of three history books I was having such a moment with history podcasts I was like oh I'm really in the mood for non-fiction history of course not really the best thing oh, I thought it'd be a good idea but not really the best thing to go into either when you are very very busy it's the first one which I've had in progress for a while to be honest I thought it'd be a good read before the GA season finished and um yeah I didn't finish it uh, but I will and that's the GA A People's History um by Mike Cronin, Mark Duncan and Paul Rouse. Um, I was really, really enjoying the social history. So many different pictures. Um, I finished off on a chapter on the influence of trains and uh, how it spread the popularity of going to matches outside people's home locality. So um, yeah, I just thought that was really, really interesting. So uh, I definitely will want to finish these. At least these, I know if I don't finish them before November, I'll hopefully finish them in November um, for nonfiction November um this was a more recent start for me and that was barrow's boys the original extreme adventures there was this man in the british admiralty in the 19th century called john barrow and um, that kind of was a patron well not really a patron in that sense like he was the force behind a lot of um exploration journeys um to africa the south pole the north pole everywhere um during the 19th century um so yeah it, it just a lot of my interests under one book i suppose so was very 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 much enjoying it some brilliant characters in here that i really would like to follow up with maybe a full biography i'd not mo known much about um african exploration um but I, you hear these odd one-off references to the sources and the Nile and that so yeah it was a uh, great to start this we'll eventually finish it there's and finally a recent start for me and was kind of accidental really after having uh, read Richard II in particular because I didn't really know anything about him I kind of wanted a refresher on what he was about so I um, dug out this book which I'd read before in 2019 uh, Brief History of Britain 1066 to 1485 um, I consume a lot of English historical fiction I suppose and um, this, like I, you get these odd snippets um, but definitely further back I'm a bit more confused and it doesn't really stick in my head which is fine um but yes I eventually I started reading the first bit and I don't know I guess I've I suppose with all the history podcasts and everything I was I was a bit interested in the Anglo-Saxons as well so um I just ended up actually reading it it's actually a very readable top level top 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 level <laughs> history um and like I've read reviews of this as well and the number one review is it is not a history of Britain it's definitely a history of England and the author just acknowledged that in the acknowledgement section at the start but um yeah still it, it really is mistitled it probably wanted them all to go together and maybe the other ones are a little bit broader but yeah it's what I was looking for I suppose um inevitably with these histories you just you would love to get a bit more depth in pieces, pieces that you're interested in. But yeah, I would say it's good beginner's history just if you want to know a little bit. Yes, that is my September reading wrap up and some other odds and ends. Um, I, I it's, The only way I can explain how September was like is I did 67 hours overtime, which is, you know, incredibly difficult and I was in the midst of nervous breakdown at the end but um yes I have I have a, a week and a half of holidays coming up at the end of November and some very exciting plans for it that were just booked yesterday so um you know like there are brighter days coming hopefully so yes thanks for sticking around thanks for listening and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video <laughs>